Well, my name is um, Juan Carlos Barroa Moreta. I am a national of the Dominican Republic. I joined the tribunal about 13 years ago, and I've been working as the head of Special Investigations Unit for the United Nations Department of Security and Safety, and based here in Arusha. And what, what, when you say special investigations, what, what, is, what does that cover? What's the job description? Yeah, the Special Investigations Unit um, uh, reports to the Chief of the United Nations Security Officer here okay. at the tribunal. And it covers all concern with um, violations of rules and regulations or misconduct um, committed by the UN personnel. Um, I'm responsible for investigating only category two cases, because category one cases are the jurisdiction of a different organ. And also responsible for conducting investigations to damage to UN property or the reputation of the organization as well, security incidents, security breaches, and so on. They are basically administrative investigations no criminal investigations. When criminal investigations take place that is related to um, national jurisdiction, I will come in you know, as a support and as a monitor on the interests of the organization. What, what year did you arrive here? I arrived here in 2003. 2003. That's almost 13 years ago okay. now. Okay, wow, so you've, you've seen a lot of change. Like, what, what, what kind of situation did you walk into back then? Like, what? Could you describe what the ICTR looked like and felt like back then? Um, <clears throat> the ICTR, um, when you have to talk about the experience of the ICTR, there's really a lot to say. Um, people out there would believe it's just about a tribunal, legal issues, some administrative offices and courtrooms, but there is a lot behind it. Um, when I arrived um, at the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda about 13 years ago, as I said, I already found a structure, solid structure. However, in terms of procedures and working, still it was developing. Uh, the city itself was very far from what it is now. It was really behind. You cannot find a supermarket. You cannot find a place for to buy a television, or you could not find um, the thing that you are used to buy in those places where you um, you come from. You know? And it was the same situation for most of the people who came from Europe, um, America. And in terms of um, um, security, you no, know, the it's been always peaceful place. However, there there always been you no. Know, issues you know, that we have um, encountered that affect the diplomatic community. Because as you may be aware, that when you are a foreigner, you are sensitive to many things. You know? if, you are a, if you have a police issues, if you have a conflict with the, with the citizens, uh, if you are victimized by crime, by harassment, it will impact you um, in a bigger way than if you were you know, a national. So um, when I came, I encounter it was not what I was waiting for because um, I didn't know about Russia. I didn't know about Africa. It was my first time. In fact, when I got the appointment, there was no Google to find out where is Arusha. So I got my world map and I tried to find it. I just found Tanzania. In Tanzania, I found Dodoma and I found Dar es Salaam. And I said, where am I going? This place is not even shown in the map. <laughs> so since I just, I just um, finished my mission in Kosovo, I was mentally, physically, psychologically prepared for whatever was coming. But when I arrived, I found a peaceful place uh, that was not exactly what I was waiting for because what it is shown in the news in our in the other side of the of the world, like the places where I'm coming from, is about conflicts in Africa or hungers and 
and those kind of issues. No such a peaceful place like this. Um, that was basically my expectations. And and I found a peaceful place when I came back. In the process, there are things, there are things that are not seen that um, makes life uh, not that easy or smooth. There have been a lot of sacrifices from the UN personnel and in order to achieve um, what the tribunal have achieved today. I mean, we could talk about that a little bit more. I mean, clearly, you came from Kosovo, which is mm-hmm. much more of like a mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. much more of a war zone. Mm-hmm. What what were the challenges uh, like coming from a place like that uh, and uh, walking into a new territory that is, at least on the surface level, much more peaceful? What were the sort of challenges you found coming into your job here? Um, well, I found different challenges. You know, work-wise, you know, as I said, I was going for a place that there was a lot of action. And I used to work with a team that was very much security aware, you know. And having come into a new place, I was expecting that you would always behave in the same manner, you know. Um, there was not that much challenge in terms of security. The challenges in terms of security came to Arusha in the last four years now, after 2011. Um, but at that moment, there were no challenges. The challenges were life conditions. The life condition like power, life condition, no finding um, proper food. Well, no proper food for our culture. No, because you all find the kind of food in the market that was horrible. But what you have, um, there was no supermarket, as I said, and whatever you could find in grocery store was very limited. Um, there, uh, there was not internet in houses, no, only in the office. Um, the, um, basically, there was the challenges in terms of in terms of health issues. There always has been, there have always been a risk, and which is especially for the children. That most of us did not realize until it was a little late, and we're talking about the, the excess of fluoride in the water, which affect most of the children that are born in Arusha. And when I talk about sacrifices, this is one of those sacrifices that um, you and staff. Um, have to take because when this happens it means that the children are marked forever because it's something that cannot be repaired no? it can be maybe minimized so and it happens most to most of, of the kids so and you cannot be avoided because the water is in the vegetables the water is in the food the product that you eat so that is that was a big challenge and still is a challenge and it has not been there has not been a way that this can be avoided um, so this is something that we we have to take with us when we go back to our country you know the children are marked the thief the stain in the thief provoked by the excess of fluoride uh, in the water another challenge was the health facilities. There was no hospital when we came to Arusha. The last, let's say, five years, there have been a development. You know, we knew hospital the last four years, but at that time, we have to go to Nairobi for anything. We have the UN clinic that it was very good for consultation and basic tests. You no know, blood tests and that kind of, but for anything, we always have to go to Nairobi. Until now, we still have to go to Nairobi for other issues mm-hmm. um, because um, as I said at that time, the, it was very poor. Um, 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 her facility, in terms of professional doctors or equipped hospital, um, there was practically none. And we have confronted issues like in 2007, 2006, there, were, there was um, a visit from high UN officials, including ambassadors, and they were involved in a very 
a terrific traffic accident and they were about to lose their life. So they had to be taken to Moshi KCMC just to stabilize them and then to be evacuated to Nairobi. You know? We have staff members who have died in accidents. We have children that have died in traffic accidents. Um, and, I, and, I, and I believe that has the, the poor um, health facility, you know, the medical facilities in, in, in Arusha were very, very, very poor. That was one of the challenges. No, as well. Mm -hmm. it is, you said in 2011 things really changed. Uh, Security-wise. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we could talk about that. Mm -hmm. like what, what, what were the changes that happened? After 9-11, after no, you know the terrorism took a new dimension and a new modality of terrorism around the world. It did not impact Arusha or it didn't impact the region. But after 2011, things started changing. Arusha has always been a very peaceful place for the staff, but the some worries came after 2003, which there were some grenade attacks <coughs> in public places, no, in restaurants, no, um, um, in political rallies. That was not Ushua in Arusha. So there was a sudden change. In the security situation, they have the staff member um, worried, and the security and safety session of the UN very occupied. And we have demonstrations, you no know, political demonstration in 2011, and then we have 2012, 2013, and 2014. We have several grenade attacks. Fortunately, no UN staff was affected during this because it was not. Um, they were not targeting, apparently, the United Nations or the international community. But these are very often places where the international community but the, would... But yeah, but one of those places where one of those places where a grand attack took place was a place where the international community, myself, used to go a lot, and other um, staff members used to love that particular restaurant. Mm -hmm. And But fortunately, that day, there was not any UN staff there. That was the best Indian food in Russia. Yeah, he was. Um, are, are there like any any moments uh, as as you look back in your career here that are that really stand out as being uh, of uh, particular importance or particularly traumatic or yeah. just like just like when when you're older looking back like that the, you're always no, going to remember. De definitely, it's definitely. Um, um, there is a lot of experience and a lot of memories that we always keep, and things that are very important now um, for me. Because with the achievement of the tribunal, as I said, that the outer world will think only about jurisprudence, new jurisprudence, no um, legal proceeding for the international criminal justice. Um, this is a legacy, but also we have, you no. Know, our own achievement apart from the commitment of the tribunal. And <clears throat> as the head of the Special Investigation Unit, I was also the liaison for the National Police. And I was the person who, a staff member, we always look to solve issues and conflicts. And I cannot count how many cases, issues came to me during 13 years that I have to solve in the benefits of the staff and the interest of the organization. Um, things happen. It might be police, a police issue, it might be a conflict with domestic employees, it might be a conflict with a citizen, it might be a legal issue, it might be allegation against UN staff. And as a foreigner, you'll be always stressed. But um, I'm so proud that I was able to assist so many staff members and then, and that brought, of course, relief. And 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 that there was a team, you not know, in the security session, behind the scene that was watching out twenty four hours for our staff members, so they can fulfill the task, and that they can achieve what we have achieved today. Um, so, this thing I take with me, and I'm and I, and and I'm so happy when I see a staff member that have gone time ago or. I meet them somewhere that they they can re they remind me what 
you know, what, what happened, how did I help? Things that I don't even remember, mm-hmm. and people that I don't even remember, but that made me really, that makes me very, very, very proud. Um, but uh, um, also our contribution. Um, we, apart from that kind of assistance, we also save lives. You know, um, we have assist people in, 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 in desperation, you know. So the, the work behind the scene that our Department of Security have made is very, has a lot to do with the achievement. Because we, the United Nations put in our shoulders one of the biggest responsibility. First, the safety and security of the UN staff, the safety and security of its property, and above all, the safety and security of the detainee, the transfers, custody, security during trials of the detainees. It was a very big responsibility. And now the tribunal is closing and you see the achievements. You see, our role was very important. There wasn't any incident, any regrettable incident all these years, no, that would affect the process of the tribunal, that would affect the trials. So I believe this is of paramount importance and and I, I feel proud of that as being part of, of that team.